Hello, 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 everybody. We're taking a look at question number five on the 2002 Euclid paper. That's the grade 12 written solution contest put out by the University of Waterloo. And uh, hopefully you've been there for questions one through four. Here we're going to take a look at question number five. It's a two-parter, just like, uh, like four was. Although, just like four, part B is trying to sneak a little extra past us. That's okay. So what does A say? A is just the final answer. What are all the values of x so that log base 5, x plus 3, plus log base 5 of x minus 1 is equal to 1? All right. Now, logs are often included on the, the Euclid contest because they're scary. Uh, logarithms, are, they, they tend to frighten off students. They're very weird confusing, and I think it's because they're introduced actually quite late in terms of education. And what I mean by this is uh, when you do addition, it's maybe next year that you would do subtraction at the latest. You know, if I have three apples and I add two apples, I get five apples. If I have five apples and somebody takes away two, I get three apples. The The operation addition and its, its reverse, its uh, inverse in subtraction they're dealt with at basically the same time. When you do multiplication, I did multiplication, I guess the earliest for me was in third grade, and division, I was doing that in fourth and fifth grades, not far off. Um, and then, so if we just think about the basic operations, like well, basic order of operations, you got brackets, you, your exponent y stuff, and then multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, those ones are paired together. When it comes to exponents, Exponents and roots are done at the same time, sort of. Squares and square roots. I did those myself uh, the first time, I think, in algebra in seventh grade. But logarithms, I didn't see for not the next year, not the year after, but I didn't see logarithms, I think, until grade 11 or 12 in the school system. And that's pretty far away from exponents, when they should really be introduced at the same time as exponents. Roots are one way to cancel out exponents, one way to reverse that operation. Logarithms are the other. But they're, treated, they're taught so late and they're taught so disconnected from exponents that the rules of logarithms are often sort of not easily brought to mind. And that's why I think logarithms can appear in these questions. They, they look quite scary, but actually it's, these questions are just basic logarithm properties almost. All right, that's enough of a rant. Let's actually copy this equation down and uh, see what I mean by properties of logarithms and how we're going to use those to solve the question. So we'll get ourselves a brand new piece of paper. So we have log base 5 x plus 3 plus log base 5 x minus 1 is equal to 1. And remember what logarithms mean. Log of a to the base b equals c is just a rearrangement of this equation. b to the c is equal to a. That's all it is. Log logarithms have some really nice properties. Um, for example, the first one I'm going to use here is uh, I got two logarithms over here and they're added together. Well, when we add logarithms, we if they have the same base, and they do, base 5, we can actually multiply their constants and get a sing or the, the, the sorry their contents and get a single logarithm. So x plus three times x minus one. Okay. And then at this point, while well, we have a single logarithm, we could use this stuff over here and rearrange. So x plus three times x minus one, which I'm going to expand in a moment is the same as our base raised to the power of what the logarithm equals. 5 to the 1, so it's equal to 5. So let's expand this out, and we see uh, plus 2x minus 3. We have ourselves a good old-fashioned quadratic. That's all that was hiding in here. So we can bring the, uh, the 5 to the other side. We get x squared plus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. And then however you want to do this, uh, uh, if you can factor it in your head really quickly, I think you'll get something like this. 
Or if you want to, use the quadratic formula. So that'll be negative 2 plus or minus uh, 4 plus 32. So that'll be 36. That'll be negative 2 plus or minus 6 over 2. And that'll give us 2 or negative 4. However you want to do it, that's fine. And when we do that, we see, well, the only way to make this equation zero is if one of these two factors is zero. Because there are no two non-zero numbers that multiply together to give you zero. So that tells me x minus 4 is equal to zero, or x is equal to 4, or x plus 2 is equal to zero, and in that case, x is negative 2. And those are our two possible answers. Okay. Now, I'm a little worried about this negative 2 right here. And I'll tell you why. When I see an answer to this, I, I start to go back and think, well, these are my two answers. I can just plug them in here, right? And that would all work out. But if I plug in negative 2, this second one here, log base 5 uh, of x minus 2, that's going to be log base 5 of negative 3. And negative 3, you can't take the log of a negative number. So this one gets ruled out. Can't take a log of a negative. So I have my two answers. I go back and I double check them. I can get log of 4 plus 3 log base 5 of 7 plus log base 5 of uh, 4 minus 1 is 3 is equal to 1 but when I do the other one negative 2 plus 3 that's 1 log base 5 of negative 3 I don't think so this one doesn't make sense and this one over here is 0 so that would mean that this one has to be 1, and that's definitely not true. So something's gone wrong here, and if we just think about it, it's probably at worst a single mark you would lose there. But uh, we do get x is equal to 4 is our only answer. So that was A part. We're going to clear this page, because that was just sort of our rough work, our side work. And we're going to go take a look at B. Okay, and B, B we need a final answer, or not just a final answer, we need a written answer. Okay, a chef aboard a luxury liner wants to cook a goose. Sensible. The time T in hours to cook a goose at uh, uh, this particular temperature, 180 degrees Celsius, depends on the mass of the goose M in kilograms. According to the formula, the time it takes is going to be A times M to the power of B, where A and B are constants. The table below gives the times observed to cook a goose at 180 degrees Celsius. Uh, so if we had a mass of three kilograms, it would take two and three quarters hours. If we doubled that, we'd get three and seven quarters, er, sorry, three and 0.75 hours. So we're asked two little sub questions using the table in the data, or using the table's data, determine both A and B to two decimal places. So that immediately says, okay, I've got to grab my calculator because they're asking us two particular decimals. Okay, so I warm up my calculator. I'm going to need it. So this is an approximation moment. And then uh, the second one, suppose that the chef wants to cook a goose with a mass of 8 kilograms at this given temperature. How long will it take until his goose is cooked? I like that. I like the wording there. That makes me smile. Okay, so uh, we have to work out A and B, and then we're going to be applying them with a given M to work out a T in, in part two. All right, so let's take the, t uh, the data in the table and translate it into equations of this form. We'll get A and B, okay? So, the first bit of information from the data it takes uh, two and three quarters hours to do A three to the B. 
Let's get rid of those brackets. Those look silly. A three to the B. And that was three and three quarters hours, I believe. So I have to ask myself, okay, how can I work out what A and B are? Well, it's just like any sort of uh, algebra that we work with. Uh, we want to, we got two equations, two unknowns. We should likely be able to do this. First thing I'm going to try and do is divide equation two by equation one. The reason I'm doing this is because when I divide, these A's are going to cancel each other out. So two divided by one. We're going to get over here, um, this is the same as 11 fourths. And this is the same as 15 fourths. So we're going to get 15 fourths divided by 11 fourths. That's going to be 15 over 11. And then that's going to be A, 6 to the B, A, 3 to the B. Those A's are going to cancel out. We're going to be left with 6 to the B, 3 to the B. Okay. Now... 6 to the b is 2 times 3 to the power of b, which we can write as 2b, 3b, over 3b, and now those are going to cancel out. And we're left with 15 over 11 is 2 to the power of b. And uh, using logarithms, and the reason we jump to logarithms rather than try and do something else is because we did logarithms in part a. So that's sort of a tip off that uh, if you see like um, like if you were doing question two on a Euclid and you saw a factoring in part A, you might guess uh, a factoring of say a quadratic. You might guess that maybe there's a parabola in part B or C, that sort of thing. So we saw logarithms in part A. We're starting to think about exponents and logarithms, and logarithms are going to be the perfect way uh, to work this out. Okay, so we can rearrange this equation. 2 to the what is equal to 15 over 11. So that's the same as b is equal to the log of 2, or a log of 15 over 11, base 2. Okay. Now, if we wanted to work this out on our calculator, we would just uh, jump right to the calculator, and I'd plug in 15 over 11, and then I'd hit the log 2 button, but there is no log 2 button, not on my calculator at least. I have a log button, but that's secretly log base 10. And I have a lawn button, which is log base E. I don't have a log base 2 button on my calculator. And I suspect most calculators out there uh, don't. I, I There are probably some fancier ones, some newer ones, that have sort of a log Y base X, that sort of thing, on them. But uh, a lot of calculators don't. In fact, I've never seen a calculator with... Uh, the, the proposed log button that I just said, but there's probably one out there like that. And maybe post in the comments if you've seen, maybe post a link to, this, to a place you can buy them. Anyway, if I'm stuck, if I'm working with a base, base 2, that my calculator doesn't have, do I just give up? No. There's something we can do to work this out. If I have any base, I can uh, work it out using logarithms that I do have. So I can use log base 10 of 15 over 11, and then I just need to divide by log base 10 of 2. That's the same if we just, uh, if we give any other base, just shove him in both places and split it up and do this division. Okay, that's a nice little, uh, I'll come back to this page to work out what B is, but that's a nice little property that uh, log of 8 base B is the same as log A base C over log b base c, no matter what c is. So you can use the log button on your calculator or the lawn button, either or. Now I'm in position to do this calculation. So I hit the log button, log 15 over 11, and then I divide that by the log of 2. And I'm left with 0 0.4474 then we wanted to do decimal places, so I would round this to 0 
Okay. And now I have B. I have it exactly, and I have it the approximation that they want. So I'm just so just so I don't have to keep flipping back and forth, we're gonna write my approximation for B over here. And we're gonna write the actual value for B over here as well, because we're probably going to need it. Because now we're gonna go after what A is. So we know that eleven over four is A. 3 to the b, but we know what b is. 3 to the log base 2 of 15 over 11. Okay. Well, I can work out what this number is, and I can work out what 11 over 4 is, so I can say confidently that a is going to be 11 over 4 times 3 to the log base 2 of 15 over 11. Now this is going to be a fair bit of work to enter in on your calculator, but you can get what A is exactly. Okay. So uh, 11, uh, well, let, yeah, 11 divided by 4 times 3 to the power of, and it all depends on uh, how you enter things in on your calculator. So I think I ended it improperly on in, in improperly on mine. So I get 1.6820 and so on. So we're going to approximate it as 1.68. The two doesn't make us round up; it makes us round down. Okay. Now, if I wanted to check if that's even uh, remotely possible, let's try it uh, 6, and we'll just use our approximations. We're just going to double check 6 to the power of 0 0.45 multiplied by 1.68. Is that anywhere close to 3 and uh, 3 quarters? It absolutely is. I get uh, 15.0500 on my calculator. So it would seem that we've got these right, and they do check out. So we have their inexact answers and their exact answers if we need them. And we have A and B. Okay. Now, suppose that the chef wants to cook a goose with a mass of 8 kilograms at 180 degrees Celsius. How long will it take until this goose is cooked? That still makes me smile. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our A and B and we're going to uh, plug in M is equal to 8 and work out T, the time because we want how long will it take. Okay. Now, when you do this one, I would not recommend you use the approximations, the two decimal place approximations you worked out in the last one. We have them in exact form, and if you can use something in exact form, I always recommend you do it. Your answer will be more accurate. Because if you start approximating and then do another calculation with your approximations to get another approximation, and then do another calculation with all those approximations, you're going to actually get further and further away because you keep sort of truncating at each stage. Okay, Sort of like uh, if you're flying, if you uh, divert by half a degree here and then an hour later into your plane travel, you divert by another degree here and another degree, you, you're, you're close to your original heading, but the more you do that, the more you're off a little bit, that can really add up and suddenly you wind up in Cuba and not the Bahamas. Okay, that's that's sort of the reasoning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and use my actual definition of B and A and work that in here. Uh, it's going to take me a little longer, but I'm going to show my work, and they're actually going to see, ah, he's using the exact calculations. His T is a little better, and so if there's any doubt, uh, I should get higher part marks than someone who just plugged in with his approximations. Okay, that's always about the marks. We want to get good marks. We want to show that we really know what we're doing here. So, plug in uh, m is equal to 8. So, t is a 8 to the b. Okay. So, that's well, what's a? It's 11 over 4 
times 3, log base 2, 15 over 11. Oi, that's annoying. And then 8 to the log 2 of 15 over 11. So we actually have uh, 2 log 15, log base 2 of 15 over 11s. I can rearrange this, go 11 over 4 times 8 over 3, and this might make my calculation a little simpler to do. Okay, so I brought the 3 uh, to the log under the 8 to the log, and then took out the common exponent. It's a nice way to do it. And um, yeah, there's nothing we can really do at this stage except actually work this out. So 11 divided by 4 times 8 divided by 3 to the power of, once again, I have to do log uh, 15 divided by 11 divided by log base 2. And I think that should do it. I hit equal sign and I didn't get an error. And I get uh, 4.26516. And I'm going to approximate that as 4.24. But I do have my exact answer in here. And I'm going to put a therefore statement right below. And that way if they have any doubts they can refer to my exact statement there. So therefore, so T was measured in hours. It will take about 4.26 hours until, which has only one L, until his goose is cooked. Okay, now the number that I'm looking at on my calculator, 4.26516833, that's not a number that uh, catches my eye. Now, if I saw something like uh, 1.73, yada, 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 or 1.414, or uh, 2.71828, those are numbers whose decimal expansions catch my eye because I'm starting to think of numbers like root 3, root 2, E. This number doesn't look like anything special to me. But uh, if I had time, I might go back and fiddle with my 11 over 4 times 8 over 3 to the log uh, base 2 of 15 over 11 just to see, can that number, is that number actually exact? Is there an exact way of writing it? You know, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, 11 over root 7, and that's actually a really nice way of putting it. Now, what we have written here. 11 over 4 times 8 over 3, yada, yada. that is an exact way of writing it, but maybe there's a simpler, like, root 3, 2 root 3 sort of way of doing it. That's that's what I'm getting at. There might be a nice, quick way of writing this. Uh, initially, when I saw 8 to the log base 2, I thought, well, I could I can actually make this, this number here is a nice fraction. And so I could do that, but uh, other than that, there's nothing really I can see going on. Uh, yeah, so I think leaving it this way is fine. If I had time at the end of the contest, I might come back and see if I can simplify it. I don't think I can right now. So I think we're done with question number five, and we're going to move on uh, to question number six, but that will be the next video. And we'll take a look at question number six on the 2002 Euclid.